Have you ever done something where afterwards you end up just staring and thinking to yourself, what possessed me to do this? Well, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the 25 worst platinum trophies on PlayStation. And if you have the platinum trophy in any of these, you definitely have questioned yourself. But before I start talking about the games, I just want to make you aware of what qualifies a game to be on this list. There's a massive mixture of games here. Some are complete masterpieces, while others are so bad, you'd rather take a punch from a professional boxer than play. But they all share the same thing. For one reason or another, their Platinum Trophies are just awful. Each game has something special about it that makes a Platinum Trophy completely unbearable. And I'm pretty confident that you do not have all of these. And with the combined completion time to beat all of these games racking over 6,000 hours, if you do have them all, you may need to seek professional help. Alright, let's get started. Well, I guess we might as well start this video off strong with the most controversial game on the list, which is, prepare yourself Sony Ponies, Uncharted. Golden Abyss. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's an okay game and this list isn't about the worst games, it's about games with the worst platinum trophies. It's definitely the weakest Uncharted game in the series, it came out on PlayStation Vita, it wasn't created by Naughty Dog, it was actually created by Ben Studio, and it's a prequel to the original Uncharted game. So you take control of Nathan Drake as you run about, there's new characters, of course him and Sully are back in it as always. Like I said, the story is the weakest, but it's still an okay Uncharted experience, and the fact that you can play Uncharted on your old PS Vita, that's a pretty cool thing that we can't ignore. The Platinum Trophy is a lot like other Uncharted games, but I feel like it pushes you further than what the other games do in terms of what you've got to do. So firstly, like most of them, you've got to beat the game on hard to unlock crushing, as well as getting all the collectibles. That sounds okay and similar, but I found this one quite difficult on crushing for a few reasons. Firstly, PlayStation 3 loading times are pretty bad. The PS Vita is even worse. So when you are dying, you're waiting a long time before you get back into the fight. What makes crushing so difficult is just the fact that you've got to use the touchpad and it's mainly done on the boss fights. You have to time these swipes at the right time. And if you fail one on crushing, you fail the whole fight and you're back to the start of the fight. That sounds fine, but you think you've got three or four minute waiting time first, and then on top of that, the fight scenes are like six, seven minutes long, these boss fights, and you might only be doing 20 or 30 swipes. The swipes are complex. They're kind of like this and this and this, and you've got to match it with the touch screen, and it's just, it's not that responsive, and it's annoying, and it really soured my experience, and even playing it handheld on a PSV, I couldn't save it. But what makes this worse than most Uncharted games is fair enough, you've got to do that first, which is very similar. And it'll take you longer and it's not as fun because the gameplay is not as responsive, the story is not as engaging, and the touchpad is kind of poopy. You've also got farm bounties, and this involves literally just going back and playing certain chapters over and over again to get the bounties and get that final bounty trophy. And you're looking at probably 10 hours of replaying the same chapters over and over again. And look, when a trophy list has you doing that, it is a terrible trophy list. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the worst pattern. That's probably the best on this list, but it's just a mediocre experience with a really shitty platinum trophy. Next, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Finally, a game where we can take over Britain as a badass Viking. For most people, that's a perfect setting since the majority of the world hates the British including the British themselves. <laughs> anyway, in Valhalla, you will pillage your way through England, take control of various territories. Pretty standard for an Assassin's Creed game nowadays. To achieve the Platinum, though, you'll need to sink in 100 hours plus. And to put this into perspective, the story alone will take you around 50 hours. But there's a count on this being even longer than 100 hours, maybe up to 150 to 160 hours to get the Platinum. Which means you're going to spend probably around 100 hours completing the same type of activities over and over again and gathering all 784 collectibles. It's fair to say, you're in for a slog with this bad boy. Kingdom Heart is a game that joins Disney and Final Fantasy together. It sounds a little bit weird, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I've just said out loud, it does sound weird, but it does work surprisingly well. It's like chocolate and avocado, you know? I mean, I don't know if that sounds good, but you know, some people probably think that's great, right? Now, I could have put any of the Kingdom Hearts games in this list, to be honest, but the one that takes the crown for having the worst trophies is Birth by Sleep. This platinum trophy requires you to get a ridiculous amount of collectibles, play some pretty annoying mini games with all three characters, which means you'll be repeating most tasks at least three times. But the worst trophy of them all is called Critical Competitor. For this, you will need to finish the game with all three characters on the hardest difficulty. And the hardest difficulty, you know, it's one of those difficulties where it's incredibly unbalanced. Where the enemies are going to have a ton of health and you're going to die in two, three, four hits. Even when your characters are maxed out, it's an absolute load of bollocks. So this one's a skill dependent platinum, but even with the amount of collectibles and the grind, you're looking at a minimum of 150 hours to platinum. And you're really going to want to pull your hair out with this one. Ah! He's fucked. Our next game is Anthem. Now, it's probably no surprise to you that this game is on this list. You've either heard how bad it is or you've actually played it and experienced it yourself. But I actually do think the hate for this game is massively overplayed. Yes, it's a massive fall from grace for Bioware, but the gameplay is actually okay and the flying is actually fantastic in this game. Better than some of the flying in other games on this list. It's just not a great game and it's just not 
a bad game either. But the Platinum Trophy is absolutely horrid. Back on the grind. The grind of Anthem is killing me slowly. Now, to put this in perspective, it took me 90 hours to get this Platinum Trophy. I would beat everything the game had to offer in 15 hours and after the 15 hour mark i was just redoing things that i'd already done before time and time again and this is a looter shooter but unfortunately it lacks any substance after 15 20 hours and someone who loves looter shooters this is a missed potential it's not the worst looter shooter i've played but it's still not particularly great but the platinum trophy has a few things that are just an absolute piss take firstly you've got to complete 12 gear challenges per class which sounds fine but the gear you get for each of these trophies is completely randomly dropped which means you could be playing for 40 hours and not get one piece of gear you need for one trophy. And that's what happened to me. So of the 40 gear that I needed for the four trophies, I had 46 of them pretty much from six, seven hours into playing the game. And there was two that I didn't have until about hour 85. I was playing challenges, levels over and over again. I just was not getting these to drop. And it is so, so frustrating. The RNG is just immense in this. And on top of that, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but this game has goddamn RNG collectibles. There's only one map that you can explore and there's like over 300 collectibles and a good hundred of them are completely RNG. So you go on the map and they'll be in a certain area or they might not be. And again, this took me about 25 hours of flying around the map, loading in, loading out, trying to find the last two or three collectibles. There is some farming spots, but sometimes they're just not there. It's just never ending. And in theory, because the RNG, you actually could probably platinum this game in about 45 hours but you probably will not. Whoever thinks it's a good idea to put random collectibles in a game and assign a trophy to it is just an absolute bellend. Multiverse is a game that lets you battle it out with your favorite cartoon characters in an intense 2v2 similar to Smash Bros. You've got all the cool characters. You've got the God Shaggy and you've got Batman and loads of other dudes probably. What makes this platinum send shivers down your spine is that you need to grind out specific battle requirements such as getting 100 ring outs, using specific abilities or weapons, but the throne is yours trophy is the one that will separate success from failure. For this bad boy, you need to win 300 times. It's just a lot of grind in this game. You're gonna play this game over and over and over again. If this game's not for you and you're committed to the Platinum, it's gonna be a really, really shit time. And it's gonna take you at least 150 hours to get the Platinum. Depending, of course, on your ability to knock people out of the ring, right? And be good at games. Next is Injustice 2, which is a sequel to The Amazing Injustice Gods Among Us, which was on one of my previous lists as one of the hardest Platinum trophies you can earn. It's a DC fighting game where you get control all your favorite DC superheroes and villains. But once again, like a lot of games on this list, RNG really comes into play for this Platinum. The worst trophy here is undoubtedly the Cat Fight trophy where you need to defeat Cheetah with Catwoman's finishing move, Cat Call. That sounds really simple, but to get this move, you either need to be lucky enough for it to spawn in one of the mother boxes, or you need to complete Catwoman's multiverse, which involves a ridiculous amount of requirements. Some of the guys here that only take you 40 hours, but that's completely unreasonable. You're looking at at least 100 hours to get this Platinum, and you're gonna spend a lot of it doing the same couple of fights over and over again. And our next game is Avengers. Now, if you've played this game, it depends. Like, if you've just played this game for five, 10 hours, you probably thought, yeah, it was fine. It was okay. The game itself is proper mediocre, I have to say. I have never been so disappointed in a game than Avengers. And I knew when this was gonna come out that it was not gonna deliver on what it originally was meant to be, and it didn't. Playing around with these Marvel characters, hitting these spongy robots, it's just a terrible experience. But the Platinum Trophy is just another grind fest. And the trophy that is really, really brutal is the trophy for completing 50 Hive missions. Now, when I did this, I don't know if it's been changed, but you have to do them all in single player because essentially it glitches. Each Hive mission is between 20 and 30 minutes long and you have to do 50 of them. But I ended up having to do 83 of them for the trophy to unlock because the trophy tracking was so bad. I mean, now if I was going in with all the characters, when I played it, I only had the original six. Now there's Black Panther, there's Lady Thor, there's Spider-Man. But this is one of those games where it's not a great game. Some people will love it, but no one's going to love getting the Platinum Trophy in this one. Imagine if Saints Row and Crackdown had a baby. Well, Agents of Mayhem would be the offspring. If this game was a real baby, I imagine you'll get the same treatment that the Spartans used to give their deformed children. <laughs> well, no, Agents of Mayhem is an average game, which may seem fun to start with, but just gets more and more repetitive the more you play it. The plan is essentially just a repetitive grind slog fest, and we all, of course, love those, don't we? The worst trophy of them all, though, is Get Personal, which, which requires you to get all agents to level 20. This means you'll be playing the same missions over and over again while rotating your agents. Yay, that's what I call fun. This Platinum would take you around 60 hours, but I'm going to save you the time and I'm going to let you know that this Platinum is actually now unobtainable, so don't bother going for it. So if you got it in your backlog, 
I'm not sure if this is bad or good at this point because you can't get the platinum, but you also don't have to go through the horrible grind that is this game. Before I talk about the next gut-wrenching platinum, don't forget to let me know what your worst ever platinum trophy is in the comments. And if this video hits 1,000 likes, I'll make sure to make a part four. The next game on our list is going to be delivered by the Devil May Cry extraordinaire Guy Fruski. I asked him to talk about this game because of his very unique history with it. Ah, uh, GTA 5. The game I platinum twice, which got me banned in the process. But well, that's a story for another time. Today, I'm here to talk about the Platinum. Now, GTA 5 is a beautiful open world set in Los Santos, Rockstar's version of Los Angeles. And it does offer a decent story, in my opinion, where you control three very different characters. This game also offers countless activities, like hiking, racing, and occasionally running over pedestrians. Don't lie, we've all been there. Now, although this game is what can be considered a masterpiece, the Platinum Trophy is anything but. It's a grindy, time-consuming behemoth. Looking at the trophy list, you'll see a fair amount of them that are time-consuming, but there are three that stand out from the rest, and these will make your life absolute hell. The Solid Gold Baby requires you to earn 70 gold medals in missions and side missions, which means you have to complete certain requirements while playing them. The Career Criminal, which requires you to get 100% completion in story mode. Similar to Hercules' 12 labors, GTA has 27 unnecessary chores. This includes completing various tasks with NPCs, winning all races with multiple vehicles, and grabbing around 150 collectibles that don't appear on the map. And if this wasn't bad enough, the Above the Law trophy requires you to reach level 100 in online mode. Even though there are a ton of activities and missions to do online, this will still take you a hell of a long time. In total, this Platinum will take you around 200 hours. If you are going for this, probably a good idea to hit the pause button on your life. I've only ever earned one Platinum trophy in any Resident Evil game. That game was Resident Evil 6. This is the ninth installment in the Resident Evil series, and there's a few familiar faces that make a return, like Leon Kennedy, Ada Wong, and Chris Shotgun Fist Redfield. And in this entry of the series, Chris Redfield is a raging misogynistic drunk, and it's very, very funny. Listen, sweetheart. You're here to pour drinks and look pretty. So how about you shut your mouth? This is what we're here for! The game consists of four campaigns, with each storyline being completely playable and co-op, which is a saving grace because, I'm sorry to say this to all you Resident Evil fans out there, this is a really bad game. The gameplay is ass, the enemies are laughable, and the story is just a convoluted mess. Gonna cry? <gasps> and then alongside that, the Platinum Trophy is a proper stinker as well. Despite each campaign only lasting three hours in length, the Platinum Trophy will end up taking you a whopping 60 hours. To get the Platinum, you have to beat each storyline on normal, followed by beating the game on professional, which is the hardest difficulty in the game. This difficulty is just frustrating and it's unenjoyable, and there's plenty of these little short sections that, that will end up taking you about 30, 40 minutes to beat. It's just not particularly great. But the Platinum Trophy isn't over there. Your last trophy will most likely be for maxing out all the skills in the game. And to do this, you require 954,000 skill points. And they are earned by just playing the game, which means you'll probably have to go through the same thing I did, which was spend 10 to 15 hours replaying the same chapter over and over again to get this trophy. Not only is this game an underwhelming addition to the Resident Evil series, the Platinum Trophy forces you to spend 59 hours too many with it. Black Ops 3. Now, the Call of Duty franchise has some pretty easy Platinum Trophies and some pretty difficult ones. I would say, on average, most of the Call of Duty Platinums require you to beat the game, at least on the hardest difficulty, so none of them are particularly easy, but some are definitely easier than other ones. Now, this one will really take the cake for one of the hardest and most frustrating Platinum Trophies you'll ever try to do. It will definitely test your patience on a level that you didn't know it could be tested. Firstly, you have to beat the game on the campaign in realistic mode, which is a new, brutal, unforgiving mode where you die in one shot. So it's like veteran, but even harder. You also have to complete the game on veteran mode without restarting a checkpoint, which sounds already pretty horrendous. But if that wasn't bad enough, the big boy of the list is the personal decorator trophy. For this, you'll need to complete a list of behemoth tasks, which include unlocking every gun with all attachments, camouflages, completing every challenge and every accolade. This Platinum Trophy, I don't even know how long this will take you, it'll take you too long. But we're looking at at least 100 hours, but probably a lot more. Our next game is going to be delivered by the man with the biggest forearms I know, Vault Boy Steve. And he's going to be talking about a game with such a long grind, you really have to be in no life to get this Platinum. And yes, he does have this Platinum Trophy. Next up on this fever dream of a worst Platinums list is one of the few enjoyable MMORPGs that existed early on in the PlayStation 4 lifecycle, and that was none other than the immersively deep realm of Neverwinter. 
Set within the iconic world of Dungeons & Dragons, this expansive world will take you all across Faerun as you explore its vibrant cities and darkest depths, all while slaying a horde of supernatural creatures, animals and of course, the big boy dragons. Now, I can't say I've ever played this game to be quite honest with you, but our boy Guy Ferruski took one for the team as he spent over 2,400 hours playing this colossal universe that he loves so much. What the hell is even that? Now, as you'd expect with any MMO, Neverwinter has a host of grindy ass trophies to contest with. You'll need to travel across a vast realm to find every single scrying stone and kill hundreds, if not thousands, of most enemy types, from the foul spawn to lycanthropes. But you'll naturally take out a bulk of these as you complete the required quest lines and level 70 epic dungeons in the late game, something you usually want a solid team for, as randoms in this game can be more toxic than classic Call of Duty lobbies. Now, the true platinum breaker for most people in this 200 hour epic adventure is none other than Dragon's Bane. This requires you to slay 1000 dragons, and these aren't any common enemy type. As you traverse the numerous regions, you'll stumble across world events where colossal dragons will spawn that require at least 10 to 20 players to take down. But even then, the tracker is so buggy they don't always count, so your best strategy is replaying the Caverns of Karandox dungeon where you can grind out a few dragonlings at a time that thankfully count for this mammoth task. Next is Predator Hunting Grounds, which is an asymmetrical multiplayer game which has four players controlling marines while they explore a map and try to complete objectives against AI soldiers. But whilst this is happening, a fifth player is thrown into the mix as a predator with the task of killing all four of the marines. The game itself is really unique and with friends it can be a really, really great time. Oh my god! No! No! I'm dead! It involves strategy, skill and a lot of squeaky bum moments while you hide from the predator. Ah! <laughs> Get to the high ground! Let's go! Oh, he's there! Please. Oh, he's there! Sag behind you, behind you, sag behind you! Stop that, I'm gone! Oh shit, I'm down. Playing as a predator isn't particularly easy either. I am the predator. You have to really master their full arsenal, which includes plasma caster, traps, nets, camouflage, and their trusty wrist gauntlets. And if you manage to actually beat the Predator, they can activate their wrist bomb, which gives the players a chance to run away or try and defuse it. It's honestly a really good time. To like oh, it's Predator! Ah! Oh, ah! Shit. You were there! But the Platinum Trophy, uh, it's, it's just got this immense level of grind. The guide suggests it'll take you around 150 hours to Platinum. This can be shortened with a good team, but without it, it could easily take you over 200 hours to do. Some of the trophies just ask way too much of you with too much of your time. These include achieving 100 headshots as Marines, successfully getting to the chopper 100 times, and this means essentially beating the game without killing the Predator. This can take between 12 and 15 minutes, so even if you won 100 games straight, it could take hours upon hours to do. Oh, well, guys, we're getting, let's get Fuck you, Predator! Look at that little bitch Predator. We got away, man. Oh, he's so miffed. He is so pissed. But the longest trophies for claiming 1,000 fire team trophies as a Predator, which involves downing a player and executing them. It's a beast. They have now released a private matchmaking against bots, so it can be done a little bit quicker, but I'm not sure what's worse. Playing against players for 100 to 200 hours, or endlessly grinding out the same level against bots for 60 to 70 hours. Both are grim, just like this Platinum Trophy. Where? Yeah, he's here already, bro. He's like, I'm gone. Wow, oh, I can dude. see him, he's there! Oh my god! Why is he <laughs> <laughs> here already? Oh, the first fighters! He's attacking us! Oh, I'm fucking dead! Oh no! Joel! Oh, he's making us his little bit. He just ripped my head off. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another one of Rockstar's masterpieces. A great story, interesting characters, with a platinum that will make you wish you never started trophy hunting. Similar to GTA 5, there's a ton of grindy trophies, which includes reaching rank 50 in the online. Keeping in mind that the online mode in Red Dead Redemption is nothing like GTA 5. Thankfully, there's no guys with green hair with rocket launchers, but it's emptier than a hermit address book. Alongside the online, you also have to get 70 gold medals in the missions, alongside reaching 100% completion in the story mode. But there's one trophy that tops it all, which is the Zoologist Trophy. This trophy requires you to study every animal in the game, and this means getting your binoculars out, waiting for that study circle to fill. Doesn't seem too bad, right? But let me add that these animals are completely RNG dependent, and when you're studying them, the circle has to completely fill for the game to register. So if it's a little birdie flying a little bit too fast, or a mountain lion charging right at your face, you better have those binoculars on them, otherwise you're going to die for nothing. This pattern is going to take you at least 200 hours, and that's if you're lucky with the RNG. Our next game is Monster Hunter World, a beautiful game where you create your very own hunter to go out and slay a bunch of monsters in the wild. You're essentially a glorified badass butcher. 
Now this franchise has been around since what feels like before Christ. And I mean, I used to play this game when I was a kid on the PSP and I'm old as shit now. So yeah, this, this series is old. All of them are really grindy, but Monster Hunter World takes us to a whole nother level. I mean, everything in this game is long. You'll end up killing the same dragon about 10 times just to build a pair of pants and they'll be red colored. And it's just that personified for the actual platinum in this game. There are a few trophies that really stand out that make this platinum trophy so horrendous. Firstly, the trophy called Franchise Hunter, which is for completing 50 of the investigations, or Monster Hunter for hunting 500 monsters, but the worst two are the Giant Crown Master and the Miniature Crown Master trophies. For these trophies to pop, you have to hunt the smallest of each monster type and the largest of each monster type. Now that sounds okay, however, the size of the monster is completely RNG. So you're going to get into a level, spend 5-10 to 10 minutes tracking someone down to figure out that he's actually just a normal, mid-sized beast. It's not really what you want. So if you're lucky, this trophy might not take, you know, too long. You're still looking at a minimum of 150 hours, but more than likely, this game is going to take you over 300 hours to get the Platinum. And that's if the RNG gods are on your side, and they probably won't be. It may not be Star Wars Battlefront, but if there's any other game that lets you embrace your inner youngling slaying Vader, it's Fortnite. And thankfully, you won't encounter a large crowd of broccoli-haired teens outside your local gym in this infamous Battle Royale, but the Platinum Trophy is a different type of torture. If you just play the online on Fortnite, there's actually no trophies. The trophies all comes from the campaign. So thankfully, you won't have to deal with any raging sprogs as you casually end their Twitch streaming careers. But you do have to save the world in the cooperative PvE wave defense version of the multiplayer game. Now, this isn't your typical eight-hour campaign either. Now, this would only take you 100 hours or less if you had a good team to roll through all the husks and there's a lot of them to wipe out. This grind fest demands you wipe out 20,000, 20,000 of those missed monsters, as well as building 500,000 structures and exploring 1,500 zones. It's a mammoth grind. But it gets worse. The trophy Guardian Angel requires you to save 10,000 survivors amongst the chaos, which may not sound too bad, considering you'll have to successfully complete 1,000 play with others missions to boot, but even the most ideal mode only allows you to save a maximum of 15 people per match. So this is going to take you 1,000 hours to get the platinum. The next game we have is the remarkably fun twist on the classic Earth Defense Force series, Earth Defense Force World Brothers, a blocky 3D-like pixel take on the classic series that used to look like a derpy rip-off of the classic Godzilla films. You can take on this rather challenging platinum trophy with three other friends and enjoy the chaos within. And you'll probably need their help too, but not just for the harder runs, but for your sanity, as you must clear every difficulty setting in the game, which means slogging through 300 missions with Inferno difficulty being the ultimate platinum breaker for most. You've also got some of that lovely RNG grind combo to tackle as well, as each teammate has specific weapons to title them, and you have to get lucky in when they will spawn and collect them all. And in a rare twist, actually owning the DLC will hinder you as well, as this increases the available pool of weapons and teammates, including the ones you don't need for the trophy list. Just a slog, man. Now, if you're feeling a bit more intellectual and are tired of blasting blocky creatures, Stellaris may be up your alley as you embark on an interstellar journey in a grand 4X strategy game to conquer the cosmos, engaging in diplomacy whilst commanding your vast fleets across your empire. Just like most other strategy games, RNG will play a significant factor in a lot of these trophies, Peacekeeper being one of the rarest to achieve. You'll need to play as a pacifist empire and avoid going to a war for two 100 years. This may sound easy, but if any other empire decides to have beef with you, it will reset the timer. And thanks to several other trophies which require RNG dependent quest lines to complete, you have no reliable way to scale how long this journey and platinum trophy will take. For example, the trophy What Was Will Be is relying on an event chain that has a measly 5% chance to spawn in your current game. And you'll have no idea if you're in luck without triggering this quest by visiting black holes. Not only that, this trophy can bug as well, so just fun times through and through. But for an extra brutal twist, trophies are only viable in Iron Man mode. Thankfully, it's not as brutal as XCOM in that you can save and potentially back up your save every few months, but that's assuming the game doesn't freeze on you. This is a mammoth, it's complicated, it requires a lot of intelligence, pre-planning, and also a lot of reactive gaming because of so many RNG events in the game. It's a toughie, it's a great game, but the trophy list is so, so demanding. From one universe to another, prepare to revisit a galaxy far, far away with a full collection of LEGO Star Wars titles in the Skywalker saga, visiting all nine films across the series for one of the longest and most tedious LEGO titles you can take on. If you've platinumed one LEGO title, you already know what's waiting for you with this bad boy, boosting a girthy 100 hour completion time, 8% of which is LEGO trophies you all know and love. After blasting the 20 hour story, you'll need to go on the rounds to find every mini kit, kyber brick, collect all nearly 400 characters, complete every event in each sector, and of course the lovely grinding of earning 10 billion studs. A task that could take weeks at a minimum if you neglect to stack your stud multipliers. It's time for some more godly Kojima goodness with a chronological mainline ending for one of the best series out there, 
Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Unlike most other Metal Gear Solid titles, MGS4 will require a lot of work to achieve with roughly 8 playthroughs if you do everything correct. Why? It's all about the emblems. These are rewarded for a variety of tasks such as holding up 50 enemies, viewing 100 pages of Playboy whilst having a cheeky tug and more. Some of the most tedious and hardest emblems stem from completion ranks such as chicken where you need to be the worst solid snake ever, racking up 150 alerts, dying and using healing items over 50 times while gunning your way through 500 enemy soldiers, putting your guts up all the way but at least you can spend countless hours hiding in a box to hit the 35 hour time requirement for this emblem. Whilst a big boss emblem is the polar opposite, you have to conquer this masterpiece on Big Boss Extreme whilst not killing a single soldier with three or less alerts, no health items, no continues and all under five and a half hours. Better yet, you cannot use any special items such as Stealth Camel, you must be Big Boss. And you're not even doing this for a specific Big Boss trophy, but for Songs of the Battlefield for obtaining all iPod tracks, which means getting all 40 emblems in the game and your time isn't up yet because you'll also need every weapon in the game and make sure to take a trip down Nostalgia Lane and not miss a single flashback opportunity. This is truly one of, if not the most prestigious Metal Gear Solid Platinum. And you really have to go to hell and back if you want to earn this Platinum. Next we're stepping into the dark and gothic world for the next epic tier grindy world of Diablo 2 Resurrected. The remake of the iconic action RPG that to find an era sees you battling through hordes of demonic entities and collecting legendary loot to build your character, which you sorely need to succeed at the Platinum Hellfest. This 1000 hour behemoth requires you to complete the game with all character classes through each difficulty individually as you level your character up and build their best skills, tactics and gears so you can tackle Hell Mode, which could ultimately result in around 24 playthroughs before you really get started with the true challenge of Hardcore Mode. Now, whilst you can tackle Hardcore Mode on normal, it only takes one mistake to end your run. No matter how far you are, you could lose this character and be back to square one. It's a very risky difficulty. And you have to level up your character all the way to 99, which can be stacked with a software version of the trophy, but don't expect an easy ride as past level 70, you start receiving an ever increasing XP penalty, extending your punishment through this platinum. So Diablo 2 isn't the only 2000s era game to make it onto this list. Next, we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. An essential part of growing up in the noise was watching Steve-O getting gnarly off road tattoos and trying not to break our necks copying Tony Hawk's mad skating skills. Vicarious Visions came in clutch to allow us to relive these painful, but joyful memories. And the platinum trophy for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is just as painful as all those times you fell on your ass trying to grind on your neighbor's car, but the biggest sting want you to reach level 100. There are challenges along the way adding to a bit of skill to the mix as well, but you'll naturally accumulate these as you play through the campaign, with only the legendary collections requiring a bit of extra legwork, such as completing 100 multiplayer matches and finishing speedruns under par on classic parks. Even after you've done everything in this game, you'll be 30 to 40 levels away from reaching that level 100. So when you've done everything this game has to offer, you've still got to spend hours and hours left in this game trying to get the Platinum Trophy. Even if you love this game, it just makes the grind too much and makes it quite an unenjoyable Platinum Trophy. Next is Shenmue 3. The iconic rich world of Shenmue got its highly anticipated sequel in 2019 with Shenmue 3, allowing long-term fans to dive back into this richly detailed world full of martial arts, mystery and vengeance. While not the hardest or longest game on this list, Shenmue is still incredibly demanding. It expects you to fully immerse yourself and complete the game to its fullest extent, including quests, activities and collectibles. The thing about what makes this game different to most others is it is just such a slow experience. But not only that, one of the most important trophies to keep your eye on is the highly missable Good Karma, which is for clocking every sub quest in the game. The progress for these quests do not carry forward in New Game Plus and can be failed or missed entirely due to their limited time windows, which means you need to have a guide on hand. As well as that, you need to collect every skill book, get the high score in every mini game, fish at every available spot, and more. It can be a really stressful experience. When you just want to get lost in this type of game, the trophy list really pulls you out of the immersive experience. Needing a guide, having multiple tabs for all these missable trophies really does sour this experience and make it a pretty bad platinum trophy, but for it, an excellent experience. Now there couldn't exist a better contrast of a banging PS5 exclusive with a not so satisfying platinum list than Returnal. Housemark is smashed this gorgeous third person bullet hell out of the park, but it's not the only hell that exists within this gem of roguelike. Despite how addictive the amazing gameplay loop is, the Platinum has a few vicious road bumps along the way that has soured more than one trophy on his experience with it. But one task in particular will make or break you. There are six survey trophies that essentially act as collectibles, with each area containing scout logs, xeno archives, containment areas, and the worst of all, xenoglyph ciphers. Unlike the entertaining containment fights and the lore providing logs, xenoglyphs are more tedious than plucking the boys before first date. Now you're going to spend countless hours working for these glyphs as they are RNG tied and sometimes they're going to be there in the run and sometimes they aren't. You are completely tied to look for this platinum trophy and you can be playing the game over and over and over again just trying to find one or two collectibles and it could be a real ball breaker and it really ruins your experience when you just had a great time with the game and then it ends because you've been enjoying the game, loving every second of it and then all of a sudden you're just replaying the same things hoping something will randomly spawn. It's a great way to ruin a trophy list and that's exactly what happened with Returnal. And there we have arguably some of the worst platinum trophies to ever grace our PlayStation consoles.
Thanks for watching and stay frosty.